Hello again. This is part two of the series of on Heal Your Gut. In part one, I told you about the sheer size and power of the microbiome, how the good commensal bacteria make good chemicals and how the bad pathogen bacteria make bad chemicals. Um, and most importantly, I told you how your microbiome gets ill first and then you get ill and you can't get better until it gets better. So that was the start. The real question in part two is, so how does it get ill? Well, your healthy body has nine good strains for every one bad strain. So the good guys out far outnumber the bad and they keep the bad in check. Now, if you damage the good guys, you bring the numbers down, then the pathogens come out to play. That's the sort of simple rule. And it doesn't matter whatever the illness, whatever the illness, it doesn't matter whether it's Alzheimer's, high cholesterol, cancer. What you see is that the numbers, the volume of, of good guys has gone down and there's a loss of strains of good guys. And that allows the pathogens to come out to play. So you tend to get an increase in pathogens as well. Now, what puts the good guys down? This is the real question. This is what you've got to worry about in your life. So be careful. First of all, drugs. Drugs put the good guys down. They damage the numbers of good guys. And the worst ones are antibiotics. And there's a new bad guy on the block, which is called proton pump inhibitors. So omeprazole and things like that. They damage your gut bacteria. Number two, you don't feed them right. Well, your good guys love soluble fiber. So for example, people with the highest consumption of soluble fiber, they have the best immune systems. And I'll come on and talk about that in another episode. So they really love soluble fiber. Soluble fibers, things like oats and uh, psyllium husk and, and pulses and lentils and also nuts and seeds. So that's soluble fiber. Alternatively, you could feed their enemies. Their enemies love sugar, lactose, you know, which is in cow's milk and so on. That's what they love, glucose and things. Thirdly, you can change the pH. The pH is the acidity or alkalinity of the gut. Now, just so you know, the gut needs to be acid. I know you've all heard about things, people saying in cancer, you need an alkaline body. Well, you don't need an alkaline gut, you need an acid gut. When you were a baby and you were on your mother's breast, your pH in your gut was 5.5. Water is 7. A cancer tumour is 6.2, and people think that's acidic. Well, you were 5.5 in your gut. Your gut needs to be acid. Unfortunately, as we age and get north of 50, we start losing all that acidity, and we wobble between acid and alkaline gut. But what makes it work best is when you're acid. That's when the good guys can grow at the right rate and multiply so how can you change the pH? Well, it's very simple. You can smoke, you can binge drink especially, and thirdly, you can get stressed. They will all change the pH of your gut, your good guys won't grow as fast, and they won't multiply as fast. Finally, you could actually get a parasite. If you get a parasite, all bets are off. You just chuck it into the cauldron and everything changes. Now, you may think, well, I've not been anywhere to get a parasite. Well, you can go to the curry house, for example, or you can go and not wash your fruit well enough in Britain. But you could also go somewhere exotic years ago. So Maryland Medical School, they've been part of the Human Microbiome Project in America, and they've shown that you can get a pathogen, but especially a parasite, 20 years or more ago and it's still there inside you okay we'll talk about more about this in, in in future episodes what i would say above all else is that doctors don't understand the negative power of antibiotics they have shown now in research several times recently that just by having one round perhaps five days of antibiotics you can make strains of good bacteria extinct in your body forever.